Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I think some new faces here. Uh, I thought everybody should have known me by now. I'm uh, Yusuf Mehta, faculty in transportation, uh, pavements. Uh, today um, we will be, uh, and as many of you know Dr. Bhauser, Pat Bhauser. He's teaching advanced transportation engineering. The reason we are here today is uh, we have got a grant from the US Department of Transportation to um, uh, integrate something called the SHARP-2, Strategic Highway Research Program 2, within the curriculum. So I, uh, we are teaching these modules in several classes uh, uh, in this, from freshmen all the way to senior classes. So probably six to seven classes we are integrating this. And uh, we are trying to explain what this is about. And I'll be talk, giving the introduction and all the tools that are available for you to use what the sharp two is about, and then Dr. Bhausa is going to talk about the uh, safety and the capacity side of the sharp two. Before we get started, as part of the grant, we must do, we are required to do an assessment. So I'll send out a pre-module uh, survey. It's a one-page survey. Please fill it out right now. And then one more we have to do after we are done today. So there'll be a pre and post module regarding sharp two. And then we'll go from there. So please fill this out. Thank you. Well, yeah, there's one question at the back. but That's why this is being recorded. I'm on the microphone. So everything is documented today. So. All right, let's get started. Um, so I'm going to start with what the Strategic Highway Research Program is. Uh, the first Strategic Highway Research Program was uh, developed in between 87 and 1992. And the product that came out of it was SuperPave. You guys are aware of that, through civil engineering materials. That was to do new research in different fields. This one, Strategic Highway Research Program 2, is basically looking at implementation. You have research done in the last 10 years. Let us try to work with the industry and try to implement it in the field, fine tune the research. So you, this. This particular grants, for, if you want to work on any of these, they have to be initiated by the state. For example, if NGDOT has, has uh, some uh, idea of looking at precast concrete, for example, they have to work with the industry, and the shop too will provide funds to look at this new technology, and then you can look at the performance or quality control issues. So we are looking at uh, develop, uh, to develop the research to test the projects, uh, test the products in the field, and it hits at several of these, uh, these points. One is safety. Uh, we are looking at safety to minimize crashes and fatalities. Some of that uh, Dr. Bhausa will touch on. Then you're looking at renewal, rapid maintenance of deteriorating infrastructure, preservation strategy, new materials, new construction techniques. Uh, we are looking at reliability in predicting. If some of you who had seen the talk today, uh, the ability to predict uh, with a significant amount of reliability, will reduce your cost and uh, will make your design more robust. And finally, ways to increase capacity to, uh, through planning um, and designing your highway systems. So all of this will affect your reliability. You're looking at safety side, your capacity renewal, and in, on the material side, you already know, looking at quality control in your design, in your input parameters will affect your dis if, uh, affect your uh, uh, your materials design. So you want to make sure your variability is low so you can have higher reliability and confidence in your design. So reliability is a big deal in this process. Right here, why we need to do that, you have, uh, this is the latest, not latest, it's 2013 uh, infrastructure card. So you're looking at, this is governed by the ASCE, so we are, uh, these are not what the grades you would like to see. Right, so um, and ASC has a little bit vested, right? If we started giving A's to everybody, then ASC, ASC's uh, people would not have that many jobs. They'll have to find another country to go there. So looking at aviation, there's a D. So I think this is now uh, you are seeing that things are looking pretty bad, and it's getting worse because we are not investing as much in the infrastructure. Have you guys seen this in report card? It comes out every year by ASCE. As I said, ASC has a vested interest in ensuring that the, all of them is at A, you know, and, and that, that's why the grading is pretty harsh. What do you have? You have uh, 
around nine nine and a half percent of the bridges are structurally deficient. Uh, 26 in New Jersey, 26 percent are functionally obsolete, and uh, it received around 170 million from the Federal Highway Bridge Fund. Uh, New Jersey has around 18 freight railroads and covering around 1,000 miles, and it's it's pretty small state. It ranked around 40th in mileage. We have around 40,000 miles of roads, 7,000 miles in major roads, and 35 percent of which are in poor condition. And and things are pretty bad in the state of New Jersey on the payment side. They call it we are always in the triage mode. So unless some fatalities happen, literally nobody goes out and goes and repairs. It's, funding is pretty tight. And uh, it, the repair cost uh, is around 3.6 billion a year, and we get around a billion a, a year uh, from the state. And as you might have already heard, the Transportation Trust Fund is going default, so they're looking at raising the taxes, the gas tax, to fund that as well. And for transit, there are around 400 million uh, passenger trips. So what? these are several renewable pro products. This is on the payment side. Uh, payment preservation techniques. We are looking at precast concrete payments, uh, new composite payments, payment renewal. And this is what we touch in detail in different classes. In this particular class, I'm not going to touch on any of them in detail. I'm just going to provide the tools between the us. We're going to provide tools that you can use uh, in designing the, this better. This is the quality control tools for asphalt payments. And I give this example with one of the projects that Dr. Sukumaran has with the laser looking at the quality of aggregates during the plant. So that is one of the ways of looking at that. Another one is the uh, use of um, uh, infrared and uh, thermal infrared cameras for uh, looking at segregation on con uh, asphalt concrete payments. And then this is looking at PCC payment smoothness. And on the other side, project delivery, you're looking at managing risk, project management, and performance specifications. On the structure side, you're looking at concrete uh, testing, non-destructive testing of concrete bridge decks, tunnel linings, uh, service life of bridges, uh, and bridge design. Uh, then you're looking at different geotech tools, um, and the non-destructive testing of concrete bridge decks. And finally, you're looking at utility conflicts and uh, railroad mitigation strategies. So one question we put in was, if you have uh, additional $960 per year, what would you do? And this is, why is this number coming from? And we are looking at, this is what it costs you, by staying in, on the roads, st stuck in traffic, costs you that much amount of money per year. So if this was from a study done in a college station. They found that uh, the congestion causes the uh, driver to waste more than 3 billion gallons of fuel and cost approximately $160 billion and you can see $960 per person. So you are looking at a significant drain on the resources every time you're stuck in traffic. Your, your time, your gas cost, uh, so you're looking at 42 hours per your rush hour commute. The capacity products, you're looking at, you, you want to show them now or later? These ones, products? Later. Should, so these are some of the products, uh, ecological tool, which uh, Dr. Bowser will, will show when he's going to do the presentation. Project delivery, economic analysis, and freight demand modeling, and advanced analysis. Did you cover this in the advanced transportation as well? Yeah, you can. Right, and then you have, oh, I'm going the opposite direction. Look, now, why safety? Uh, the goal of the US Department of Transportation is to work towards zero fatalities. So we are looking, one of the uh, things is looking at connected vehicles. You want to be, have the vehicle, the ability to to uh, know when it's slippery, the roads are slippery, snowing, if there you can take appropriate detours if there's, a, if there's a danger ahead, and anything you can do towards reducing your fatalities. And you can see here the fatalities are, are going down, and even in New Jersey you can see the numbers are going down. Here, some of this, uh, you, do you see some of these spikes, and you can see why this is happening. Can anybody tell me why this spikes goes up and then down? Yes. You have more people, and what happened? The economy picked up, right? I mean, people are dry. So I think you should. Usually, these numbers have to be 
uh, normalized to vehicle, uh, the vehicles traveled. So if you don't have jobs, if your, your economy is in recession, people don't be on the roads as much. And so the fatalities drop as well. So. Then you have the other products. You're looking at the state DOTs have received uh, assistance to look at uh, to gather driving and uh, uh, sharp two databases. And you're going to talk about that as well, right? Naturalistic databases. And the goal is to look at better safety policies, technologies, and countermeasures. So you can see the SHARP2 is addressing all these issues in uh, that. And these are all the products that was there. So this grant that, that we received, were, we are one of the 10 universities in the US that got this grant to integrate the SHARP2 within the curriculum as well. So these are all of these that we are touching on through all our four, uh, uh, seven or eight courses. The first one is the innovative bridge design, uh, accelerated bridge construction. That's a, that's a very big thing now because you don't want to hold traffic, precast concrete. Uh, so, uh, so this is one of the videos that you see. You come in, you, you install your precast concrete beams, you get in, get out, and stay out. The biggest issue with uh, accelerated bridge construction system is durability. The durability is a big issue. People do well on the concrete side, but trying to understand shrinkage, freeze thaw, and they are seeing premature failure. So there's a big push in trying to understand how this accelerated uh, bridge program will perform in the long run. All of them have 200 years or 100 year life. Who, and there's, who's going to live for 100 years to see whether it lasted that long? So they are, they are worried that they don't last as long as they promised that they would um, in these bridges. So there you can see a video or time lapse. Then we're looking at uh, payment renewal programs, uh, pre-stress uh, pre concrete payments, and uh, we want to start that uh, part, the payment renewal. So that's this is one of the several ones. Welcome to this introduction to the Repave scoping tool. As you get started and familiarize yourself with the tool, we'd like to show you some of its features and give you some ideas for how to use it. The Repave scoping tool is an interactive web application that you can use to identify potential options for pavement renewal. It specifically emphasizes rapid renewal using the existing pavement in place with designs for a longer service life of 30 to 50 years while including construction information for building long life pavements. As a web-based program, the scoping tool is easy to access and provides a quick and effective analysis of renewal approaches for an existing pavement. The streamlined approach allows you to identify a renewal approach and compare different options using a few basic inputs. The tool also includes resources to provide guidance for pavement assessment techniques, design and specification processes, and best practices during construction. The Repave scoping tool was developed through funding from the Strategic Highway Research Program. Input on the development was provided by State Departments of Transportation along with industry representatives. It is based on a decision matrix with criteria for determining when an existing pavement can be used in place, which treatment approaches to consider, and what modifications and design thickness are necessary for a long pavement life. The scoping tool criteria are structured to identify renewal approaches for consideration based on a given set of pavement, soil condition, and traffic loading characteristics. As you collect information regarding these characteristics, you should review accompanying resources such as the Project Assessment Manual for guidance on collecting and assessing this information. The basic sequence for a renewal design process using Repave is as follows. One, Collect the required design information. Two, develop one or more pavement design alternatives using Repave, which will provide recommendations for pavement layer thickness as an initial estimate. Three, confirm design options and refine the recommendations using your agency's standard design procedure. Four, if you are considering more than one design, which is recommended in most cases, select the final design based on a life cycle cost analysis. Resources to support all of these steps are available through the tool on pavementrenewal.org, including guide specifications, life cycle cost guidelines, and best practices. 
you can see th there are many tools like that in the advanced payments class. We are going to go through a full class using this tool um, uh, uh, in one of the courses, classes. So go to next one. That's it. Right, and you are looking at another one is the non-destructive testing. Um, you're looking at field uh, spectroscopy device to fingerprint uh, common construction materials. You are looking at ground penetrating radars for looking at uniformity in new hot mix asphalt layers. That uh, GPR is used for uh, uh, checking air voids in the system or inconsistency in thicknesses. They're looking at delamination between hot mix asphalt layer, looking for smoothness in Portland cement concrete. Uh, and then uh, this is a continuous deflection device. This is almost like a falling weight deflector meter, but now almost like a rolling weight deflector meter. And then you're looking at voids, debonding, de and laminations. I want to show that too. So this is the website, and you can click on payment if you are looking for payment, and then it will give you the technologies for evaluation and uh, all the information. So you can look at all the description, basic description, and then if you want to go for a uh, uh, the report and everything you can also research about it. And this is just uh, the website, but if you search for the with this title and this uh, uh, in on uh, in Google, you will all you can also find a very detailed report about all this uh, product. Okay. You can find a detailed report about each of this thing. So each of these research um, uh, reports. So the next one is a service life design for bridges. And the, the main objective is to provide uh, uh, information on the design procedures, uh, service life. And it, it has, it's a pretty extensive document. And the link is here. All right, the next one is the new composite payment system. That is the. Uh, it looks at the detailed performance data of the existing composite system using the mechanistic empirical payment design guide. Um, and that is looking at hot mix asphalt over a Portland cement concrete or PCC over PCC. And this particular document looks at construction specifications and techniques, life cycle cost, how to manage your quality in the field, and provide training tools uh, for construction and design. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, transportation uh, travel time. So first of all, let's understand what is travel time reliability means. So this is what <coughs> the graph on the right this this is what you experience over a year and uh, this is what you remember so everybody is familiar with the 42 uh, 295 congestion bottleneck right so that's what you remember and uh, so uh, imagine a scenario where you're going to airport you know that typically it takes 30 minutes but if, what if there is an incident and there is 20 more minutes so you you may lose your flight right but if that uh, that variable message sign at the sign on the highway says that uh, there is an incident, it will take 45 minutes. So you you will prepare yourself for that, right? And what if you know this information ahead of time before you start from your home? That okay, typical incident on this roadway will take uh, five to ten minutes more uh, than uh, the t uh, the uh, traditional 30 minute travel time. So if you know this all the time, then you will all you will remember that okay, yeah, I have to start 40 minutes before my, uh, the flight, right? So that is the gist of reliability. So if and that is that is what uh, this project means that you have to remove this buffer time. This is the mean. This is what people uh, typically experience. But when you have incident, the delays may vary from 30 minute to two hours. So. And sometimes more than that, if you have, if you are talking about an incident on, in that very heavy highway in China. 
So the, the, there are two projects uh, about travel time reliability and I'm going to talk about uh, both of them. The first is framework for improving travel time reliability. So how do you improve, wh how do you, what are the steps that everyone should take as a transportation agency, what, what are the steps that they should take? What are the projects they should consider to improve travel time reliability? And uh, yeah, so this is the, this was actually a knowledge transfer system. They started as a project title knowledge transfer system and then a lot of state DOT got involved and they wanted to talk up, uh, they wanted to get uh, same kind, similar kind of system for their uh, state and this is this and then they changed the name to national operation center of excellence in this uh, this website this is t, uh, the the primary things are tsmo products and tools t, uh, tsm means tsmo means transportation system management and operations so as a public agency employee if you are if you are managing a traffic uh, traffic center or transportation system management and operation what are the steps you should do? What, how do you find out that you are doing better or worse? So these kind of things. Other, than, other thing is, what are the current practices? I am in New Jersey, but what Florida is doing right now? What California is doing right now? So that's why they also have, in addition to this tool, they also have a forum. They also have case studies on this website. And they, there is an initial report too from where the, this product developed. So, so Using this website, as a, you can register and you can share your experience and you can learn a lot of things. Yeah, so this is, and the, they also have a SHARP 2 product primary contact for each type of tool, safety, renewal, reliability, capacity. And then if you go to the presentation. Yeah, the presentation. And so the next is a uh, reliability data archive. So this is a comprehensive arch archive of lot of projects. If you go to this uh, site shrp2archive.org, you can search different pro uh, projects. You can search uh, uh, in, uh, reports, detailed reports. If the project involves the uh, software tool, you will find a link for that. Or you, are, you can download different presentation, webinar, everything. So they, they created a, a very good data archive. And another purpose was you can upload, uh, as the project uh, other project goes on, they can uh, also upload their uh, data. Metadata means all the raw data that you use for the research. Searching with results and arrange in a list or on a map. So you, can, uh, you will see a lot of uh, data. You can use a lot of data visualization tool for, for this. And uh, next product is, next product, uh, so now you have, let's say you go th through this website and now you know that, okay, I know how to improve travel time reliability in my area. I know how to inform, how to give uh, reasonably accurate information about travel time to all users in my, uh, uh, in the transportation system that I'm managing, right? What is the another thing, uh, another thing, another th primary thing is incident management. It's not that, okay, you give uh, uh, reliable information, but how do you reduce the incident uh, duration? What are the steps that you need to take? And how do you train the uh, first responders uh, uh, who are actually dealing with this kind of incident? So this, this is an extensive resource. It has a set of trainings, presentation, evaluation method, everything to train people who are dealing with incidents, uh, incident management. And that involves uh, DOT, agent, DOT employees, uh, fire, uh, uh, cops, uh, hazardous material management, emergency management, everyone. It depends on what kind of area you And there are two websites. One of the thing is, uh, this is the link for the report and all the other data. And the second one is safe, quick clearance. And I, if you can play this video here. The incident responders captured in these dramatic surveillance videos are the lucky ones. 
all of them survive. Every day, incident responders across America put their lives at risk every time they're dispatched to traffic incidents on our nation's roadways. Reducing the risk means preventing secondary crashes, and an innovative traffic incident management program developed through the Federal Highway Administration is helping to clear accidents more quickly, saving lives of responders and the traveling public in the process. Tens of thousands of police, fire, emergency medical personnel, transportation agency employees, and tow truck operators have already received training through the program. The aim is to ensure the safety of responders and the traveling public by providing agencies with the tools they need to work together with rendering aid, clearing roadways, maintaining traffic flow, and conducting accident investigations. The key is good communications and coordination. Traffic incident management is critical. We have responders getting struck every day. We have responders dying every day. And it's something we're going to have to address. The National Traffic Incident Management Responder Training builds teamwork by bringing together emergency responders and helping them understand one another's cultures. The training was developed by responders for responders. Personnel across all responder agencies are trained together in the most effective techniques to ensure safe, efficient, and coordinated clearing of traffic incidents. We have to understand what each other's jobs are on these accidents and get these accidents cleared as quickly as possible to avoid those secondary accidents. So it's simply about putting everybody on the same sheet, making sure that we train together so we understand what each person's uh, responsibility is about possibly saving a human life, which is ultimately our number one goal, and just making our roadways as safe as possible. These national and international organizations are all in agreement that the TIM training is working to make our highways safer. It is estimated that incidents cost the economy throughout the nation about $300 billion per year. So it's important for us to recognize the economic impact that uh, incidents do have on the nation's economy. I believe that within the next three to five years, we will begin to see dramatic reductions in the secondary crashes that are caused by traffic incidents. Visit these websites to find out more about the training opportunities in your region or to bring this program to your state or agency. Yeah, I think it's... So what do they mean by secondary incidents? So you're driving, there's a crash, and oh, that is secondary. It's called rubbernecking. Most of the time, these are the secondary incidents. Because other drivers are busy looking what happened instead of the roadway. So make sure you look at the roadway and not, OK, the left or right side. And it's a ma very major prob problem, especially on freeway. OK, so next is Regional Operation Forum. So this is, again, how to design. This project was pretty, uh, really interesting because it's communicating the value of operations within an agency to customers and among a regional decision makers. So this is how do you train? You have all these different research pro uh, products going on. You have uh, output from there. You have software tools from there. You have, so how do you train people, the current, current workforce in DOT, in, uh, in uh, emergency management? How do you train? How do, you, how do they know all about all this? So this project focused on developing a training program for them. So similar to incident management, this project also has a set of PowerPoint, a set of like, I, I'm going to say 16 or 18 class modules. And it's a set of uh, how to teach it as slides are ready. You just need to, if you are expert in one of the field, you can teach that thing. And this program will mainly focus on training the current workforce. So audience here, well, of course, the, the audience was, uh, the general public was audience. But the decision makers, influencers, and implementers, they were also the audience. Agency leadership. 
the primary thing is how do you explain all this very cool and complex research to politicians to leaders who are deciding that okay how much money should we fund on on what project for the future so now this is this these were the reliability products now i'm going to talk about capacity product i can yeah and uh, all the, the the list that you saw here this list all the c this uh, pl from plan work c01 all these are capacity products but the cool thing is they combine all these products into one website so you can have uh, access to that website it's called econ-works.org and this uh, this website has three primary thing plan works travel works and econ works so i'll just give a very brief introduction about all these things so this uh, plan work website is for better planning and better projects so for example let's say you graduate you get a job in a transportation consulting firm and you are working on corridor planning uh, project you have to plan corridor right how do you start so here they, they they have a decision guide you can click on decision guide and you can select corridor planning and it will it will give this detailed explanation but these are the steps you can go on each step it will give you description who who can be your partner what will be the role type everything cool thing about it it has a case study example so you can look at the final product how your corridor planning study should look like okay this is uh, another uh, thing about this website are these uh, applications so economic development if you are working on greenhouse gas emissions project and, and each of this application and overall this website is a result of multiple research project okay so let's go for a very simple uh, application performance measures right so if you you know that okay you are going to work on some project but this uh, corridor planning project but you don't know what kind of uh, performance measure uh, should i use should i just use travel time or just should i put a carbon dioxide emission in that or not okay so this this is a simple questionnaire if you answer that that okay my project is in an urbanized area it's a primary residential area uh, the road capacity is in, insufficient and it is uh, adjacent to wetlands and it will be built in, in an undeveloped area or will be built in a developed area so residential and it has already has water quality and air quality plan and it's a corridor study so if you click this and evaluate and it will give you all this information so for mobility if you are shooting for mobility in your project what kind of performance measure you should you consider if you are shooting for accessibility what should you consider okay so this is a very well laid out very detailed website and i would recommend that you can use plan works as much as you can for your different projects if you, now let's go to the next uh, econ works next product is travel works and this is advanced travel analysis tool so some of you who are in my class they we use this in detail but uh, i will just show you the these are the these are the different tools that you can use and you have to download it but for now i can just explain that uh, this the one one of one specific tool is rapid policy analysis tool this is this tool is developed using r and lot of uh, database and lot of information from other uh, census and other data what you can do you can in this you can uh, uh, develop multiple scenario for for your region or for your small region so if you you can start with the base scenario the current condition you can put lot of information what will be the 
what is the population range what is what are the things that you want to consider for future then you can add one more scenario then you can compare how it uh, how it will compare with this uh, uh, rest, uh, and I think yeah this let's see if it shows and this is is where it says base scene one scene three so it is here it is comparing daily vehicle miles for different scenario how it will behave in, make a, uh, assuming that you have provided enough input and there is a software it's easy uh, to download it's freely available you can download and you can play with it you can put your different numbers and uh, you can see how uh, the, your future may look like if you do s small things it's a really really nice software next the last is econ work this is particularly important because how do you put this thing uh, all the research or whatever project you do in terms of numbers what how do you do benefit cost an analysis how do you estimate uh, if you are saving 30 minutes travel time per day how do you estimate how how beneficial that is and this is particularly useful when you are explaining to this uh, your research or your project to decision makers so these this website provides a tool to convert everything into and then provide a very detailed uh, economic analysis this are uh, these are analysis tools and it can give you uh, benefit cost information some of the tools are excel based it will it can give you that if you are uh, looking for a corridor study and if you if you find that each commuter is wasting one hour per day uh, because in in the current condition it can give you that number that okay that means it, the, each commuter is wasting 19 dollars per hour now if you have and this is based on their the, the data that they collected from different study okay so if you have this kind of information you can put to put together a nice presentation that okay we are wasting this much uh, this much money just because of this delay now in a year if you are wasting 20 dollar if you are 1000 commuter in a you know day you are wasting 20000 dollars right so in a year you will be wasting a lot of money now you can compare that okay what if we invest on this project this much money we can get uh, the, the entire investment of a million dollar back in few years okay so these kind of things you can do with these tools there are a lot of uh, different tools available here uh, you can this this is a simple tool to find your project find a similar project this this website has uh, econworks has multiple case studies built into it so if you select that okay you are your project is excess road and it's somewhere in the mid atlantic region it's a urban area or a metro area if you click get result it, uh, let's say let's put 10 miles length of the project why it's not okay it's distressed and it will give you this project cost direct impacts supplier and wage impact total impact now your project mean will may not be say exactly same as this study right so you can also access case studies case study search and there are a lot of different filters available here and you can access that see the cost of this uh, first project was 1.61 million and it will give you all the detail and report available the cool thing about this thing is if you are a project manager if you handle the similar kind of project you can also put your data in this site and that will help a lot of different people in the US all right so you, this is uh, I want to say this is this are this these are these tools are kind of like living documents so you can always update and get latest information from these. 